Parental discretion is advised. This week on the Wrestling Mayhem Show, we talk about TNA's many failures, including Bound for Glory vs. The Fans, CM Punk and the best wrestling documentary in the world, and Hulk Hogan's penis won't go away. Who's responsible? All that and more coming up this week. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Wrestling Mayhem Show 342, the show where we talk about wrestling. We love wrestling. We hate wrestling. It is a bitter, bitter pill that we have to swallow every single week. I am Sorgatron here in the studios in Pittsburgh, PA, Mayhem Studios. What's falling? What's falling, Chachi? What's falling? Something's falling. I have no idea. Something's falling. With me is... The bridge is falling down. No, don't. Don't that, Chachi's, that ruined, Chachi's pants. That ruined the mood. Chachi's pants are <laughs> coming down, coming down. Okay, that's better. Uh, There's Chachi what? on the couch in the studio. What up? So, uh, 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 since the show started uh, last week in the chat room, someone said that I had to run out and buy the CM Punk DVD. And uh, JP, the intern, also said that I had to run out and buy the CM Punk DVD. So, guess what I did? You didn't buy the CD, DVD? You no, did not I, buy the DVD. I bought the CM Punk DVD through Google. Did you watch it yet? I did. And I can say without a shadow of a doubt that it is 100% the best wrestling profile DVD I have ever seen. Nice. 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 Um, it covers everything. Um, that. He doesn't specifically mention his time in Pittsburgh, mm-hmm. um, but there's a couple trips uh, with him and um, Colt Cabana and him and Chris Hero that mm-hmm. they talk about doing uh, like 200 shows in an insane amount of time just because of the matches that they were having together at the time. And every time that he talked about the loop that they did for those shows, Pittsburgh was like the second stop on the loop. And it's the most candid uh, wrestling profile DVD that you can watch. Like, mm-hmm. everyone is 100% honest on this DVD. You know, a lot of those, though, have been going that way lately. Right. Like, like, the Big Show one was actually really good. Yeah, the last Ray, the, Big Show the one. last Ray I, I Mysterio like one, where it was like a, a, I think it was an interview by Matt Stryker, yeah. for the most part. Uh, even like the Randy Orton one, you know. Um, and a lot of those are getting used on main event when they profile guys before the match. Yep. So um, I've been really liking the direction of what they do with but those I mean, DVDs. It is 100%. If he had a problem with someone, like a, a personal problem backstage with someone, or didn't like the way that the direction was going mm-hmm. at the time that they're talking about on the DVD, mm-hmm. it was put right on the DVD. If, if people didn't have, if people didn't like CM Punk. It was put right on the DVD. Nice. Like, it's nice. 100% uh, honesty when it comes to this particular wrestling profile. Nice. Yeah. All right. Also with us is DJ Lunchbox. Have you re- Do you have any DVDs to review for your intro? Uh, yeah. Um, actually, I got the CM Punk DVD, um, and everything Chacha said was right. <laughs> excellent excellent also with us from san antonio texas is the wrestle fan hello ladies and gentlemen yes it's the wrestle fan here I haven't watched cm punk dvd yet did you so that's get it sort of the the theme of the intros but i want to pick it up soon funny how everyone else on the show hasn't watched or has watched it before me and i'm the indie wrestling guy so that's kind of weird um so yeah wrestling mayhem show let's do this yeah but lb was the was the indie wrestling guy before you were because he brought the ring, of, ring of honor to I was, all of us. I was I was I was into Ring of Honor before we had a wrestle fan. Yeah, yeah. That's so, true. That's I mean, very true. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if that counts. It's it's true. They they spend a lot of time they are very candid about his time in Ring of Honor and they talk about Samoa Joe and Cole Caban is actually on the thing. Samoa yeah. Joe doesn't show up obviously for obvious reasons. Um once but uh, and they show clips from uh, the part. series of three matches he had with Joe, and uh, it's great. They nice. they're like Josh said, they are very candid, and they don't fuck around on the DVD, which is great. Not absolutely at all. great. Also, back at us is Bobby F J Town hey, from Johnstown, everybody. PA. How you doing? Pretty good. Um, I was going to say, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Lunchbox. Uh, 
Lunchbox was throwing streamers before WrestleFan had streamers on his bike. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's good. Uh, but yeah, I, I didn't watch the CM Punk DVD yet. I plan to. Um, I am also going to watch and review, uh, check it out with Dr. Steve Brule. That comes out this week. Not wrestling related, but it's awesome. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Excellent. Well, of course, you have, like you said, this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show you've come across. we got a website over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can check us out on iTunes. We're on Blip TV. You're on your Roku device via the Blip TV app. We're on Stitcher. Please go vote for us in the 2012, uh, 2012 Stitcher Awards. Uh, I believe we're still uh, voting open for that. Uh, please, uh, you know, we're on iTunes. You know, please uh, 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 star us. Leave a comment for us. All your feedback helps for the video and the audio versions, whatever you're listening to, watching. Uh, just let let and let people know about us. We want to grow the Mayhem Nation. If you dig it, pass it along, please. Also, uh, we are over. Uh, oh no, you can contact us at good times. Good times. Good times at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. You can drop us a line at our phone number at 412-206-WMS0. Uh, you can also follow us on Twitter at Mayhem Show. We're on Facebook. We have a lot of discussion over on the Facebook open group group open group uh so go just look up wrestling mayhem show and look through the groups and uh it's the one that has a lot of activity going on there and we'll let you right in we're also on google plus as well if you're doing anything uh relating to this show please hashtag it hashtag wms342 so we know that it's a comment relating to this on your social media platforms and also please buy the app we're on the itunes store for uh for your iPhone, iPod Touch, iPad of any size. Go on and get that app. Uh, we're also on the Amazon App Store for your Android devices as well, including the Kindle Fire. So please go check that out. It's a dollar ninety nine. Gives you exclusive content uh, plus connections to all that stuff I just rattled off right before yeah. this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would like. Uh, I would like to uh, before we uh, dive into the fan interaction portion of the show, which is immediately following. The this rambling part, yes. part of the show. Uh, <laughs> if someone in the chat room could email uh, Good Times at WrestlingMayhemShow dot com, uh, the link to the Chris Hero CM Punk uh, Bring the Barn Down match. What? That would be awesome. You want to see? Did they reference it? They did. Okay. I, I want to see that match. Okay. Is it, what, it, what, what is a match where is, is there a barn involved? Uh, one of yes. uh, the what was it? IAW. IWA, IWA, yeah, IWA Mid South, uh, right? Yeah, Mid South. Uh, one of the last matches in uh, one of their original building. It was a barn. Um, Chris Hero and CM Punk wrestled a match mm-hmm. in which uh, they put each other through like drywall and hung from rafters and stuff. Literally trying nice. to bring the building down <laughs> because it was. Yeah, I know. I know was, they had a really good series in IWA. <laughs> it was. It was the uh, the main event of this uh, of the particular show. And it was the last show in the building, so CM Punk and Chris Hero decided they were going to do whatever they could to uh, fuck this building up. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> it was a, from what I've seen, it is a very shitty building, so, so I'm not surprised they did so, that. So yeah, if someone could uh, send us an email, I, I would like to see the entirety of Didn't that. Didn't we have one of those shows in Glassport when we were doing the rap groups Probably. one time, where yeah. like the wall was coming down behind us, and we're yeah. just like, all yeah, right, that, here we go. Computer yeah. rebooted a couple times. Oh no, that was a whole other thing. Yeah. Like you're in the middle of a set, and all of a sudden you hear the windows chime. That was bad. That was so bad. yeah, if, if someone could send us uh, that link to Good Times at WrestlingMayhemShow dot com. Good times. It, it is an indie match that I would love to see. <laughs> I would bet. I bet you would love to watch the CM Punk Chris Hero uh, IWA matches because a lot of them went like ninety minutes. Did you ever see the uh, the Homicide CM Punk like strip joint match? Yes. Yeah. I wish joint. they would have talked about that on the. DVD. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. was awesome. No, I have Oh, they talked about that on the DVD? No, I wish they would have oh, yeah, talked yeah. about that on the DVD. It was hilarious. <laughs> it's because... And a really fucking good match. <laughs> I think I might ha- actually I might have that in my stuff upstairs. Well it's it's you infamous because um they fight in the strip club and as Punk and Homicide are fighting on this maze stage, these two girls are like grinding up on top of each other. <laughs> and then when CM Punk gets a break, he runs over to yell at the girls, You are a whore <laughs> mm-hmm. That's very true. Thomas wins, and he celebrates by uh, sitting there getting a lap dance. <laughs> so mark it down on the calendar that uh, Chachi uh, said he wanted to see an indie match. There you go. There yep. you go. It's and now to the fan mail. Friends. 
Uh, and to the fan mail. There's a lot that came in basically while I was doing the show. I hope you guys are keeping an eye on it because I have no idea what's going on. Oh, yeah. Where do we Holy freaking shit. start? Uh, we went from one to four. Okay, uh, uh, because of what came in, Russell Fan, you now get to get, do the Mexican. I get the Mexican yes, now? Yes, because I am the voice of the other two. So... Okay, let's do this. And, and in the meantime, uh, while we're setting up, somebody d- did send us the video. Uh, is this going to work? There. Oh, what's going on here? Uh, the CM Punk match? Yeah, it should and pop up here. The uh, CM Punk homicide. You one are sec. a whore. One sec. Oh, it's not going. It's not going. Something's going. Not going to happen. Oh, not there it happen. is. There it is. Here it comes. You're a whore. <laughs> there it is for you guys on video. All right, who's got this first one? I have the El Gran Azul email. Let's do this. Hola amigos, no Ray and Raw, no me gusta. Ole! Ole! Rest of Raw es decente. Coming soon for El Gran Azul review for Wrestling Mayhem Show, with your approval, of course. Be on the lookout for it, amigos. Until then, muchas gracias. Ole! Ole! I feel like he had a little bit of the uh, or- of the big PPC accent in there. <laughs> Kinda, which yeah. really there, there's more me. at the bottom. Yeah, also, oh, also I'm sorry. Hashtag ole! And also, P.S. R.H.I. pay-per-view spoiler. El Generico is back. Ole! 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 I think it's supposed to sing in at that point, but yeah, uh, that, works. that works. That works. Yeah, ole. Ole. So. I have roommates. <laughs> Whoops, sorry about that. All right, what's next? Um, I, I have Tetris music? Yeah, yeah do you want to do you. that one? Do it. Okay. All right. Hey, Mayhem Crew. It's me. It's me. It's Big PPC. TNA pay-per-view was pretty good. <laughs> Jeff Hardy can suck a dick for a sure. <laughs> TNA attempt to keep him from going to WWE WTF. F. Disappointing for sure. I was happy with most of the rest of the show. Besides, nobody thought that Devon would be an Aces and Aids. I bet he is not the leader since it was not revealed as such we will see. RVD no X champ is cool but weird. I think Hardy, I'm more X division champ and RVD will be better for champ against Aries, but whatever. The creatures of the night better be happy. What a bunch of losers, fairies, not worth my time, Jeff Hardy fans. What the fuck ever. Joe won, hooray! Joe Ryan wins, hooray! Chavo and Hernandez is kind of rare since I liked all three teams. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh, Ru- Storm vs. Rude was probably best match. Hogan coming out in Clearing House was pathetic. I wish he would just be a GM and not a dumbass, old, ridiculously stupid, pointless individual as Hogan is. <laughs> I, he should not be in the ring competing in any way or physically get involved. Hogan equals nursing home patient. Wow. What a kick by Kingston on me there, up there with Brog Kick and Tubby Empty. He got knocked the fuck out. Man! Chris Tucker voice. <laughs> T. Brian Kane, good stuff for you, Joe! <laughs> Team Hell No I, 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 I think you were supposed to take a previous thing in the Chris Tucker dances. voice. Seen Cara's blue lights on SmackDown. Boo! This is stupid. I hope Ray comes back from injury soon. No more blue light special bullshit lights. By the way, Ray and Kara will lose El Grand Alzula and Vladimir Kozlov should be still in WWE. But oh well, at least there is a credible USA champ, not an Italian pin salami bullshit ass competitor. <laughs> Penis. Sounds delicious. Ryback getting a shot at Punk is cool. I don't think he's going to win, but at least he doesn't need to be in main event all the effing time. First time for everything, by the way, Cena finally put a fellow face over, but has not since Zack Ryder and whoa, 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 he blew it. (laughs) Primetime players. Best team Cobros again. Santino has officially lowered Zack Ryder's stock as 
Lo as Santino stock. If you were interested, you could find right a Santino and Santino's Koreas in the toilet. Please frush when through. Ugh. Poor <laughs> rider. Barrett and Seamus should be main event for Hell in Cell. Not big show. Sorry, show, but it would be more entertaining in my opinion. Referee missing leg or foot on ropes is getting old, I think. Eve was blonde attacker. Let's move on. I would like Natalia to be on TV or Caitlin, ugh, to bring back AJ to the ring. PWI 500 this year is good read, FYI. Ziggler and Otanga versus Ryback is interesting. Ziggler left the match, so it doesn't seem like it was a real handicap match, but whatever. Great! It made Ryback look strong against at least real superstars, kind of for Otanga, but yeah, I said, like, whatever. I know there is mixed feelings about WWE 13. I per-ordered my copy this week, so what is your favorite person that you are excited to play as? What is a stable you could make in the game? And what game type or feature were you most looking forward to in the game? I will make the nation with Kingston, Henry, our truth, rock, <laughs> or United Nations from WWE 12 with Seamus, Barrett, Drew McIntyre, and William Regal. I like the universe and attitude air modes, and I can't wait to use Brotus Clay and Damien Sandow. You're welcome. Till next time, it's me. It's me. It's Big BPC. All right, and of course, let's go ahead to his questions. What was the first one there? Who's ex- who are you excited to wrestle as? Uh, what in, in the game? Yes, yeah. indeed. Anybody got Mike Tyson? I'm, I don't. Mm-mm. I don't care either way. Uh, myself. I'm, I'm, I'm just... excited to wrestle as myself. <laughs> Seriously, a wrestle fan? Uh, I don't know if I have one in favor. I like. I really love the uh, downloadable. The, they uh, announce a bunch of downloadable content of all mm-hmm. the new superstars, and they're like all of my favorite wrestlers, like Antonio Cesaro, and like the Usos, and like like all these random people that wouldn't fit in the game. And I think that's uh, that's what I'm probably would be more excited about. All right, what about you, uh, there, Bobby? Not Randy Orton. Not Randy Orton. <laughs> Anybody but Randy Orton. No, um, probably Punk. I, that's who I usually pick. So. Chachi. Uh, see, I, I'm not really excited to use anyone in particular in the game. Just all together. Uh, yeah, right. I mean they're all there. I'll use them as I want to use them. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. No one, no one really takes precedence over anyone else, uh, considering that mo- the majority of them have been in games before. <laughs> yeah. Used them. yeah. What was that? You know what? You know what? I, uh, you know what? I changed my vote. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play as Primo. I'm gonna play as myself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Russell fans lucky as hell. Because he's in the game. He <laughs> doesn't goes. have to create himself. Like, I'm there. They make there the go. character for you. <laughs> there you go. Um, so stables. Uh, I, I, You know, this is where I would have some fun with that article that they had a little bit ago, where they had, like, the whole scenarios. What if they did the NWO with such and such and such and such? I think I would, like, you know, start applying that and kind of use that as a template and, and, and have some fun with it. Cause I, I, kinda, would... I mean, they're good. They're not, they're not good ideas for you to do on TV. <laughs> But they're mm-hmm. fun ideas for you to play with in the context of a video game. I would create the Hungry Hippos. Which would be? It would be uh, Ryback, um, <laughs> uh, Big Show, Mark Henry, Brody's and uh, the Usos in Brutus oh. Clay. Yeah. I was going to say it. Was, uh, <laughs> yeah. they, they have to be managed by Vicky. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, LB? Uh, myself, I, I, I genuinely I make uh, I make uh, this, this a variation on the same character every year okay. with a lot of kick moves and shit. Um, and uh, yeah. All right. What about stables? I'm sorry, I, I jumped. Over oh, oh, oh. Um, I don't know. I always I always like to make. Um, uh, I, I make this stable called the Disciples of Hardcore, and it's like Mick Foley and Sabu and um, me, and then somebody random. Like somebody who has never done anything, like Shelton Benjamin, or I think I, I think I did put Primo in one year, and I like <laughs> oh an Edge, I put Edge in there, and it changed everybody's color schemes. Nice. It's a great time, great time for everyone. Nice, Russell fan. Um, I never do a lot with the whole stable stuff. Like I, I, I don't know. It was never a thing that like sort of stuck out with me. Um, I don't know. I guess like a lot of the stuff you named, like that international stable they had last year. 
um, just try to come up with some creative stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know. There's a lot that you could do with the roster they have. Definitely. Bobby? The United Nation of Domination with Barrett, McIntyre. So just combine the two. Regal and Cesaro. Nice. And, 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 uh, yeah, Seamus Barrett, McIntyre, Cesaro, and Regal as the voice. So... Awesome. All right. Uh, Rez, uh, Chachi, I think you you are required to read the one that came in from the Riz. Uh, in the meantime, I'll do the boat diggity. What? I'm the voice of both of these guys. Oh, then double duty it away then. <coughs> Trust me, it will go by quickly. Yes, it will. Yeah. <laughs> and they're kind of about the same thing. <laughs> they are. <laughs> Woo! Ow. Bo fucking diggity is happy, but Russell fan, bitch, I hope you get trapped in a Jumanji game. Woo! <laughs> That's it for that one. Uh, it's still funny. <laughs> and, and read the other one. I'm going to. He's working on an Android phone. WMS! Home. Fuck you, Wrestle fan. I will do what I want, <laughs> when I want, to whomever, uh, to whomever I fucking want. This is my time now. My time! My time! Fuck TNA for having a decent pay-per-view with two back-to-back -back shit endings. <laughs> Fuck DNA for having a decent pay-per-view. <laughs> Ryback's over as fuck, and if you don't think so, then fuck you. McMahon totally forgot his match against Paul Heyman, and Russell fans crying because now everyone's making fun of his ass and pushing back his crappy indie mag minute segment. I'm out! <laughs> Until next time, Riz. So, yeah. So what do you really think, Riz? He <laughs> wants... No, that was AJ wants you to be in a Jumanji game. <laughs> I don't I think know everyone where, wants me to be in Jumanji I don't know game. where that line came from, but I love it. It's that. a great game. I Fuck love, you're saying it. I don't know. <laughs> I love that line. It's my favorite. I'm still laughing about it. All right. On that note, I think it's time. That's it, right? Is there anything else snuck in there? Yes. All right. Let's toss I do, it to... Can I do my stupid, horrible, everyone hate segment now? Let's toss it to the horrible, stupid uh, segment done by the Wrestle fan. And we're falling down. It's the Indie Minute. Indie Minute, ladies and gentlemen. It is time for this week in Indie Wrestling. The first thing that I'm going to note is our good friends over at Renegade Wrestling Alliance had a big event this past weekend for Bloody Harvest 4. Uh, I know Sorgatron Media, Sorg, and Shachi were in attendance. So Wait, yeah, I was. I was sorry? there. I was there. Were you there? Uh, was I? When was I, it? You you probably should know this, Shachi. I'm so confused. Well, well, Sorgatron Media was at least there. So what show uh, did we record Saturday? I think that was Bloody Harvest. Did somebody bleed? Did no. did they? No. Sorg. Oh yeah, someone did bleed. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Someone did bleed. Did they harvest the blood? Did they harvest it? <laughs> no. Did they, make, did they make a new superhuman out of it? No. Um, no. But no. Uh, so yeah, Sorg and Chachi, uh, I believe, would know a bit more about uh, what happened down there at that event. Uh, yes, uh, it was. It was a pretty good. It was a pretty fun show, actually. Like there were some pretty uh, interesting matches. Like here, we've seen a little bit of video coming up in a second of uh, Lodi on Facebook. Uh, 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 after being busted open by uh, Ryan, Ryan Edmonds. So I don't think that came up. The video is doing a weird delay thing right now. Um, so, so that was, and after having a great match with uh, uh, Jock Sampson, where they uh, almost destroyed the DVD table, and um, yeah, Piss, pissed off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you guys have seen the the uh, picture going around the Twitter and the Facebook of uh, of, of uh, Mrs. Sorg not reacting to. <laughs> Two wrestlers she landing no, on her DVD she, table. She's she, supposed to be. She no sold the fuck. She out no of that. sold the fuck out of that. I needed to they, be like, they're just like, you need to at least like seem concerned. Sorry, of they weren't Canadian. So you know, I mean, I'm <laughs> because I'm afraid they're going to destroy the DVDs. But other than that, uh, yeah, they were they weren't Canadian. Wait, Bobby, what was that? Hey, <laughs> they weren't Canadian. <laughs> you said you got to do the head thing. I did. You did. Hey. Hey. Oh, did you? It, oh, yeah. there it is over there. Do it again. My fat head uh, takes up the whole screen. <laughs> hey? <laughs> oh, that's weird. Everything's on delay. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently, all video is on delay now in the system. So we'll fix that after after our break here. Um, uh, but yeah, no, no, it was a fun show. Um, uh, Mitchell, Mitchell, and uh, jo uh, Brian Mitchell and uh, Joseph Brooks. I thought was. Uh, pretty good. It went long as hell, though. Uh, G. Raver and uh, Scott Saren, uh, friends of the show. We talked to 
a few months ago when they were tag team champions. They, of course, did the breakup thing and had uh, uh, first at least is going to be two matches, I guess, because the way it ended. Uh, 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 Chachi, you were you were first hand on that match. That match was insane. Mm-hmm. Um, they spent very little time in the ring, and the majority of the time destroying themselves everywhere but the ring. Yeah. yeah. Um, it ended with a uh, a draw when uh, G Raver did a swanton off of this like six foot high platform above the stairwell, and neither guy could go on. Yeah, yeah. So I'm looking forward to see how that match uh, turns out. Uh, very sad that uh, uh, the A team will not be there the next couple months uh, for Aww. RWA events. So sorry about that. But I mean, but we're still doing the DVDs. We got the B team out there uh, taking care of things. So don't worry about it. At, we, at least we, we have a B team. We do have a B team. So <laughs> so that's that's good. And we got and we have uh, you know some new people we're bringing in to help out uh, with the DVDs. So yeah, that's good. Very cool. Just, no, uh, no, no interactions with Asian grandmothers this show. Uh, you know what? No, uh, the wrestlers took care of that. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> she was well, sitting. She was sitting two two seats over from the uh, the entrance, and uh, before and after the match, she would be her own dumbass self and try to stand up and get them to stop what they were doing and sign an autograph. <laughs> and they they just pushed her away. Mm-hmm. So uh, the and wrestlers they took her in the back and fucked the shit out of her. No, no, <laughs> not this old, not this old Asian lady. old Asian pussy. Hey, hey, don't don't put it past John. Very <laughs> good yes. for back. That's uh, all I got to say. Wow. Okay. Uh, so there. But no. Yeah. And the next show, uh, rwa.live.com If you want to find out more, uh, it's uh, I presume Lodi's going to be back. I don't know any more about it. I don't think they have anything posted yet. Uh, yeah, yeah, nothing's posted yet match wise. All I know is the main event's gonna be Kato versus Shane Taylor. Uh but you can you can hop over sorgatronmedia dot com slash store and uh and uh and check out the D V D. So mm-hmm. so there you go. Wrestle yeah. fan, tell me more. Tell me more. I will tell you more, and I will tell the like fans more about another Sorgatron Media uh, <laughs> venture. Um, this weekend, uh, Sorgatron Media will be at IWC No Excuses on the uh, 20th, which is a Saturday, uh, for in Elizabeth, Pennsylvania, for their big event. Uh, a lot of friends of the show on this card and a lot of big matches. Uh, for the IWC heavyweight title, Logan Shulo defending against Dalton Castle, uh, both friends of the show. A uh, three-way match for the Super Indie title, Sammy Callahan versus Fasad versus Rich Swan. We have the Founding Fathers versus uh, Blue Collar Slaughterhouse, including one David R. Demira uh, for the uh, IWC Tag Team Championships. Uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a really great sh- uh, a really great show, I think. Uh, and like I said, Sorgatron Media will be in attendance. Uh, Shima Zion, former uh, Zima Ion, former TNA X Division Champion, will be in attendance for that event. Uh, and it should be a really fun time. So mm-hmm. um, I definitely encourage anyone t- uh, in the Elizabeth PA area to go check it out. If you want more information and tickets, you can go to iwcwrestling.com and go support some uh, really good friends. Yeah, um, I really I've been impressed with the car they're pulling together for IWC lately again we're, we're it feels like we're getting to the point where we're getting to feature a lot of stuff like we had a fill-in match with some CZW guys which was cool to see something different uh, uh-huh. Rich Swan, which is a CZW guy of course Sammy Callahan uh, which is from that and other other promotions. Um, just uh, with Michael Tarver, you know, I, you know, coming in a, a, a former NXT uh, guy with the original Nexus and and, and all that. Um, and a Cleveland native, back and, and a Cleveland there. guy. I mean, he was really big before NXT. I don't know if he's back there yet, uh, but he was really big with like AIW and some other Cleveland promotions up there. Uh, so it's it's really cool. There's there, there's that that feeling going on again of like there's this this is the place where the talent comes to. You know, where it showcases stuff. We, we're getting people from Shikara, CZWs, and, and other promotions. People are like, oh, hey, that's that guy I've always heard about, and I want to get a chance to check him out. You know, just mm-hmm. like back in the day, we're going to be like, oh, low key's coming. Oh, so and so's coming. Oh, you know, this guy's coming. You know, um, so so that's really cool. You know, and, and it, it, it's, it's getting to like the point where I want to say I wasn't excited about the last couple of years, but where it's getting exciting again, you it's know, getting, it's getting, building getting back up to that level that it was before. I think, um, of course we're not going to see, I think as much of the TNA stuff like we used to because of the situations there, like you're not going to see like, you know, three guys on a card because then we can't film anything. 
So, <laughs> but other than that, um, what's that? No, I was going to say shaking my fist at TNA. Um, yeah. Yeah. So we're dang great. Crawling into um, the internets. So yeah, like I said, go to IWCWrestling.com for more information on that. Uh, the next thing I'm going to talk about is our good friends down here in – why I, I said it <laughs> Don't like do that. Playing, Don't do that again. Which is very appropriate, appropriate. Our good friends down here in Texas at Anarchy Championship Wrestling. They have a big event coming up this Sunday, uh, the 21st, for Beyond Good and Evil. Uh, it's their big October event, their Halloween event. Uh, they mentioned uh, costumes are encouraged. Uh, fans every year come in costume, as well as a lot of the wrestlers will be wrestling in various costumes. Um, so that's going to be a very fun night. There will also be a costume contest uh, with a big prize for the winner. So definitely come in with your best costumes. It doesn't have to be wrestling related. Uh, it can be anything you want. Uh, so definitely come check them out. The main event, uh, Jacus Pliskin defends the ACW Heavyweight Championship against Showtime Scott Summers. Uh, Jerry Lynn goes one-on-one -on -one in, in uh, continuation of his retirement tour as he takes on friend of the Wrestling Mayhem show, Gary J. Uh, Rachel Summerlin, another friend of the show, will be taking on her former tag team partner, Jessica James. Uh, a lot of great action. Uh, ACH, Portia Perez. There's going to be a double dog collar match. Uh, a lot of phenomenal stuff. Um, and So if you want to go check that out, that's uh, October 21st in Austin, Texas, 912 Red River Street uh, at the Mohawk. Uh, awesome. Uh, it's going to be a really awesome show. I will be there. Uh, so go check them out at anarchychampionshipwrestling.com where you can get tickets and more information. And I hope to see everyone there this Sunday. Um, and the next thing I want to note is another big event coming up uh, the 19th, which is a Friday uh, this weekend. A company I haven't mentioned a lot about, but it has been making a lot of big waves, and that is Shine Wrestling, uh, the next uh, upstart female wrestling promotion. They're holding their fourth event in uh, Ybor City, Florida at the Orpheum on October 19th. Uh, they've been holding a lot of big events with a lot of great female wrestling names, some of the top rising talent uh, in female wrestling, uh, and they do have a connection with Shimmer Women's Athletes. Um, and the main event for this card, uh, Shimmer Wrestling Volume 4, or I'm sorry, sorry, Shine Wrestling Volume 4, uh, will be for the Shimmer Women's Championship when uh, Soraya Knight uh, goes one on one with former WWE uh, Women's Champion Jazz. Uh, so that's going to be an absolutely phenomenal match. Uh, it's going to be a really great show all around. There's a lot of stuff from, uh, like I said, the top uh, talents in all of female wrestling uh, really converge uh, for that event. So if you want to check them out, it's in uh, Ybor City, Florida at the Orpheum on October 19th. If you are not in the Florida area, you can always watch it on iPay-Per-View at uh, WWNLive.com. Uh, so definitely check it out on iPay-Per-View if you cannot check it out uh, live. Uh, and uh, like I said, go to ShineWrestling.com for more information. And the final thing that I want to note uh, in the uh, indie minute is uh, another thing that has to do with eye pay per views, and that Ring of Honor had their big uh, Glory by Honor eye pay per view this past weekend. Uh, and from the reports that I have heard, it actually was uh, a, a really good event. Um, uh, we've talked before about how uh, ROH has had some problems in the past with their eye pay per views. Luckily, from the, all the reports I've been hearing, there were no problems this time. I believe one of the reasons about that is because they uh, started the event early with like sort of a pre-show sort of thing. So they were able to like sort of detect any problems if they were to come up and they would have time to do it without, you know, interfering with the mat with the matches. Um, so that was really good. Hopefully that's an upswing for ROH's production. Uh, the main event was Kevin Steen retaining the Ring of Honor World Championship against uh, unbreakable Michael Elgin uh, in what I heard was a great match. Um, both stars are really uh, top rising stars in the independent scene. Uh, and it concluded with uh, Kevin Steen uh, after his match being delivered a package. Uh, and when he opened it, it was revealed that it contained the mask of El Generico. So there's a possible chance that we will be seeing Kevin Steen and El Generico again. Uh, that was an amazing feud that took up a good part of, of uh, 2010 uh, in Ring of Honor. And it was amazing stuff. So maybe they will rekindle that with uh, Steen as world, uh, world champion. 
Uh, also to note, uh, there was uh, one big injury report from the pay-per-view, and that was Mike Mondo, former WWE star, um, competed. He wrestled Mike Bennett on the pay-per-view, and what I heard was a good match. Uh, he had broken his tibia during the match, and apparently it is a serious enough injury where it will require surgery. Um, I don't believe there was an update on how much time he will miss, uh, but uh, from the Wrestling Mayhem Show and from the Indie Minute, we are hoping uh, Mike, had Mike Mondo a very speedy and safe recovery and hope to see him back in the ring uh, ho- hopefully very soon. Uh, so if you want more information on Ring of Honor, check out their next live event or their next iPay-Per-View. You can go to ROHWrestling.com. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you are on their local affiliates um, uh, in uh, in uh, whatever area you're in, uh, definitely watch them on TV whatever, uh, whatever time they show it. So mm-hmm. I would definitely encourage you to check that out. Uh, and that is all I have uh, for yes. this weekend in wrestling. Yeah, thank you, WrestleFan. And actually, I look a couple notes on uh, Ring of Honor. First of all, I uh, well, they're coming to the Pittsburgh area. They're actually doing a uh, TV taping here in the Pittsburgh area, uh, down by where we do the other wrestling shows at the uh, you know in that area at the Ross Trevor uh, Ice Gardens, and it's technically Bell Vernon, PA, was the Pittsburgh area, of course. Uh, mm-hmm. So go check that out. Uh, Tickets start at twenty dollars. It's a good show. But just see them see them live. I, I highly recommend Ring of Honor, even the TV show. You know, even back when they're H- on HD Net, and I thought it was like the the most void of expression version of of roh i've ever seen on tv the show live was still exciting uh oh so, yeah and, and and definitely even the shows coming out come along a lot better here uh also i i had the fortune uh because of one of my jobs uh we were we we're getting a little bit of a pitch from uh the local affiliate here which is uh my network tv uh 22 and fox 53 uh so in well first i'm like, they're like oh well, you know you guys probably don't know we're owned by you know sinclair broadcasting and stuff so like no no I know you guys because you do the uh, Ring of Honor deal. Shocked. He was just absolutely shocked that I knew about that stuff. I was like, <laughs> oh, you know, Wrestle Mayhem show, what, you know? Um, but I but I got to talk to him a little bit after and stuff. So, um, you know, obviously, like, it's, it's you know, mostly syndicated programming on those channels. Um, right. Which, there's a good reason if you look at the numbers um, and the demographics and everything like that. Uh, but they said Ring of Honor is doing really good. Even like he told me, you know, look, I looked this week. They moved it up uh, half an hour um, on su- on the Sunday night replay, uh, which is good for me. I get to check that out and not have to wait through a stupid, you know, like it was literally like I watched the TNA pay per view, switched over Ring of Honor pretty cool right uh but he mm-hmm. says they're it the ring of honor is doing really well for them i mean obviously they're not going to hit any kind of numbers like you know wwe tna even you know i i really don't think they're expected to at this point uh, I, i'm not I'm, but, you know uh they're not no they're not expected to hit you know those kind of numbers no I no think. no no this is nice filler program for them to stick on there uh at five o'clock you know for us locally five o'clock six o'clock p.m uh, I, I think they might have just moved it there too, uh, you know, here in the, in the afternoon, Saturday afternoon, or throw it on Sunday night, you know, for the you know, for everybody can't sleep from the weekend. I mean, they're they're doing. It sounds like they're doing good numbers for that, at least locally in this area. They're getting getting good ratings from it, and so you know that that works. So I, I think Ring of Honor, you know, as long as they keep doing stuff like that, they have a place there, and God, I hope so because I mean, they got bought by these guys. So if they see they not have a place, what happens to Ring of Honor? If exactly. they wear out their welcome with this company, you know, do they get mm-hmm. sold or they just go away? So, but good to hear that. It, it's promising and it really seems like things are changing. We talked about the Jim Carnett thing. Uh, I've been really enjoying the show the last couple of weeks. Uh, really good matches. Uh, some of it's kind of cheesy and old school, like when they do the local commercials. But I kind of like that. because <laughs> It's a nice throwback. You know, I was actually tweeting again with some like not typical wrestling fans uh we've been talking about ring of honor like on twitter and personally and i was actually getting like kind of a business advice email and then he dropped in you see ring of honor this weekend how about Shelton benjamin just saying yeah all the time you know something like that you know because we had (laughs) i guess we we, we had this promo about about the pittsburgh show and there's like you're who are you gonna because nobody knows who they're gonna face on this thing yet so they're just putting out these generic i'm gonna kick whoever's ass is in front of me kind of promos uh Mm -hmm. so yeah, so like Haas is talking and Shelton Benjamin just follows everything up with a yeah or something like that. So, I mean, they're, they're super cheesy, but they're tremendous in it. So, mm. well, that is all. Thank you, WrestleFan. Mm? I, got, I got something real quick for the Indie Minute. Uh, this weekend, our friends at uh, Phoenix Pro Wrestling are having a show uh, called To Be Determined on October 20th <laughs> to benefit autism awareness. Um, Where did you two- start? <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's in Evansburg, Pennsylvania. Um, uh, general admission's $10. Um, the two matches they have on the, the uh, card here, uh, all the matches are from 4 to 6 p.m. Um, the two matches they have are a cage match between uh, C- C4 and Coma Clayton and a three-way ladder match uh, for the Gemini Tag Team Championships, I believe, uh, between Project 13, Starlight Gaze, and the Wild Cards. And uh, I believe I, s- I sent a tweet also to the Mayhem Show account um, with John Cena holding a Mayhem or holding a I wish a Mayhem Show shirt no but holding a Phoenix Pro Wrestling shirt which is kind of cool so oh nice yeah there it is uh, here it is uh, well, I'll come up in a second there uh, I think I think I think yeah, sorry we're having a weird delay problem going on here yeah. mm-hmm. and there it is boom yeah I don't know who the kid is that's cool that's really cool <laughs> So, all right, thanks a lot. We're going to take a look at what's going on gold. What happened to Bloody Harvest this past weekend? A little bit of a preview there for you guys on video. I'll be re- right back with Remember When? You. Thank you, everyone. Wrestle fan. What? Your, your thing's not big. My thing's <laughs> not Just a child. From the Wrestling Mayhem Show, it is. I don't believe that worked. <laughs> no, no, it didn't. Now it didn't. Should have just let the bee, man. Should have just let the bee. Now we're going to waste another 20 minutes over there. <laughs> He's so fucking happy over there. Oh, no. Look how happy he is. Hey, guys, it's uh, great. Bobby, let's see. Let's see. Oh, he's so happy. So let's do this. I'm in the club bouncing. Trying to politic with this bitch, but I'm shouting. So I just let my gold do the talking for me. Diamond shining yellow and white, two tone jewelry. Who is he? Fresh to death. Oh, yes. I'm what's happening now. Don't care what's next. Don't flex. Still, this girl wanna walk up to me. Try and get. Hey guys, welcome back. Thanks. Go check that out. Bloody Harvest 4 on DVD, circuitronmedia.com slash store and digital download. It should be up by now. Uh, so now's that time of the week where we do that segment. Remember when? <laughs> now, um, we of course, you know, like we, we <laughs> did our introductions that turned into the uh, CM Punk review period at the beginning of the show. <laughs> so I figured it was a good time to kind of remember when it goes, you know, somebody's been on top as long as he has. I mean, geez, he's what, a month away from being a full year, isn't he? At this yeah. point. So uh, he's, he's at 333 days. I think it's time. Uh, as of Monday, I think. I think it's time to celebrate CM Punk. So uh, let's let's go around and talk about our... Uh, favorite cm punk moments uh uh, for me i uh thoroughly enjoyed only because of the reaction that i received from my mother-in-law i've talked about it here on the show before straight edge society the very hand picked by cm punk by the way it was it was really yes really that's every every person in that roster that's cool hand picked that's really cool um, but do, remember, like, there was that kind of religious cultish overtone to it, mm-hmm. like, to the point where I received a call from my mother in law that was like, I don't think I like this, you know. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, that was one thing that, <laughs> sorry, I just looked in the chat room. Uh, that was one of the things that, uh, that, that really popped out there for me. Uh, and then, I, and I don't want to take, uh, incidentally take anybody else's, but really, uh, when he had to wear the luchador mask because his head got shaved. That was awesome. <laughs> that goes along with that. That was pretty, pretty tremendous. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead around. And we'll, cool. I know you got to have one there, LB. Yes. Um, you have plenty. Uh, I, I have a couple, actually. One was um, when CM Punk first debuted in ECW and they had those weird vignettes where the camera was like, din, 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 Rebel. <laughs> Stuff like that. <laughs> that shit was ridiculous and awesome. And um, he, he does talk about on the DVD about uh, when he was you know, trying to get called up in the WWE. He was so trying to just beef up and beef up and beef up. And you go back and you see shots of him from uh, that time. And he looks fat. He looks really chunky because he was trying to beef up and be really muscular. And he's muscular, but his face is like 
like a catcher's mitt. Um, and aside from that, uh, uh, obviously the matches he had with uh, Samoa Joe and Ring of Honor were uh, fantastic. One of the favorite wrestling DVDs that I own uh, is um, – his last match in uh, in Ring of Honor against Hulk Cabana, his actual last match in Ring of Honor. It's fantastic. Uh, great stuff. Everyone should go out and buy it. Uh, spend whatever you have to to lay hands on that. that those are my uh, favorite CM Punk moments. Awesome. Wrestle fan? Uh, my favorite CM Punk moment sort of ties into uh, the whole Straight Edge Society thing because it was one of the things that sort of started the whole move into Punk doing the Straight Edge Society thing. And that was when he was world champion uh, over on SmackDown and he made a big fool out of Jeff Hardy and uh, kind of uh, told everyone the fact that, yeah, this guy's a drug addict. Why and he was right. This guy that's a drug addict. <laughs> he um, was the truth. And it, but that's the thing. It was the truth. That's the thing about CM Punk. You can hate him and you can boo him all you want. The best stuff is when CM Punk is saying stuff that's one true, two stuff that you know he truly believes. Mm-hmm. You know, stuff that you can tell. He, he's not like phoning it in. This is stuff either he had he has to go through in the past. Or, you know, it, whether it was, you know, Jeff Hardy uh, making fun of, or not making fun, but bringing up the fact that Jeff Hardy's a role mother, e, model, even though he does tons of drugs, or the fact that John Cena is the corporate guy that everyone, you know, wants, uh, that, that you know, Vince McMahon clamors towards and, you know, sort of uh, goes towards his every whim, you know, sort of thing. Um, he, he says it to the, in a way in which you believe him. Both because there's a lot of facts that back it up, but also because you truly believe that from the places he's come from, that he does have that opinion on people, you know? And that that was the best part about CM Punk, and it is the best part about CM Punk. Awesome. What about you there, uh, Bobby? Uh, well, since we're celebrating CM Punk, ta-da! Um, I had confetti. Um <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my personal favorite CM Punk moment was when he was in Johnstown at a house show, and AJ's told this story before, but um, it's it's one of my favorite uh, house show and CM Punk moments. He basically was fighting with a woman with a baby in the crowd, and she put her baby on her hip and was arguing back and forth with with him, and he was like, "You're out of shape. You need to get in shape." And he went in the ring and did sit-ups, and it was just amazing heel work. It, it was awesome. So that's one of my favorite punk moments. He made a woman put her a baby on her hip and then hand, hand the baby off later just so she can argue with him. Awesome. <laughs> Chachi? Uh, hate me all you want, uh, but my favorite CM Punk moment is kind of what led to the current CM Punk. Uh, a the The whole thing where he was given the mic and he sat down on stage and told it how it was therefore leading up to the greatest tweet in the history of Twitter ever and that was CM Punk with the picture of the WWE championship in his fridge (laughs) (laughs) it was the greatest tweet in the history of Twitter yes because I I, I I remember it because we were uh, we were all watching Money in the Bank from our own separate locations, and the first thing we said when it was over is, "I want to know where they're going with this." Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. a mere few hours later, CM Punk answers everyone because they were in Chicago, yeah. so he just went home. Yeah, <laughs> and he just went home and he put the belt in the fridge and he let everyone know that he was keeping the belt safe and nice and cool in his fridge. Wasn't he also like partying with Cole Cabana, like in downtown Chicago or something, yeah. with the belt? <laughs> Probably. I would yeah, have yeah, he was, he was, he was. AJ, awesome. AJ has a good one too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, from the from the chat room, we we'll go over those here. Uh, oh, Diggity says CM Punk, John Morrison series of matches for the ECW title. Fantastic yeah. stuff. Yeah. Uh, Big yeah. PPC says CM Punk and Rey Mysterio feud <laughs> as well. Uh, Riz IUP says slapping the shit out of Shannon Moore and Hot Wheels randomly says RWA had a black ref. Yeah. 
Yes, they did this weekend. <laughs> what? Yes, they no, they have. Yeah, they no, do. they did. They do. Seriously, like the first match. What did oh they say, Taji? I'm on the headset. I'm like, dude, they got Blackraft. Yep, Blackraft. Like not a Blackraft, <laughs> the ba- Blackraft. Yeah. I, I think it looks because there much can like only it. be one Blackraft. So yep. Like. Yes, there can. It's like the fucking Highlander. Okay, just moving on. Uh, so there you go. Some CM Punk stuff. Thanks a lot, guys. Uh, so let's go toss it over. Let's see. The countdown happened. They had to bound for glory. Let's see what's going to happen on the Madden Mike's Minute of Mayhem. I think we've lost a column. TNA, TNA, TNA. It's Madden Mike once again with your quick minute of mayhem. Um, Jeff Hardy's the champion. The big reveal on a Senate was that Devon's in it. I haven't watched the pay-per-view yet. I'm going to. Because I want my decision to be informed. But, um... I think we're done. I think we're done, Dixie. And if we are, expect a column this week explaining exactly why they're done. And, you know, it won't be all negative. I will talk about some of the positive things TNA has. But, yeah, I think we're done. I think we're done with this experiment. So, um, ma'am crew, let me know what you want me to review. If you want me to review WWE main event, because I get eye on, I will. Um, I'm not going to watch an internet show. I'm sorry. It's not going to happen. I'm not going to watch NXT. I'm not going to watch Superstars. It's not going to work. I'm not going to review Ring of Honor, because I don't really care. And I don't get it anyway. But, um... If you want me to review movies, maybe pornos with wrestlers in them, I don't know. But rest assured, there will be a weekly review coming soon from Mad Mike. Maybe about episodes of Impact gone by when it was good. You know, five, six, seven, eight, nine years ago. But, um, Raw, they're ruining... They're bru- like I blame Cena's elbow for this. Punk's not ready to lose. Ryback's not ready to lose. Unless Cena gets added next week, or something crazy happens, like Brock Lesnar takes out Ryback before the show, maybe. I think something could happen. But until then, um, this has been Mad Mike with your very brief minute of mayhem. Peace, bitches. The abusive relationship that is uh, of wrestling fans and TNA fucking continues. Uh, that's basically what I think happened this weekend. <laughs> there were some good yeah. matches. Don't get me wrong. There were some yeah. good matches. Yeah. But this is this is not your WrestleMania. Come let on. Me, let me preface this. Come on. This. Come, on. This. Come on. Fine, Mad Mike. I know Mad Mike made this deal that he was going to stop reporting on the website about TNA after Bound for Glory was going to suck ass because we knew it was going to suck ass. Um, that's fine. And... You know what? Go ahead. But, man, Mike, I proposition this to you. When, however, like nine months comes down the line, when Destination X comes around and they start doing good shit, you are not allowed to watch them anymore. You're not allowed to review them anymore. Because, and it's, it's you know, if you're going to quit off something, quit it for the long run. Yes, I did not like Battle for Glory. Battle for Glory was really a piece of shit pay-per-view, in my opinion. Um, but it's going to get better. It, TNA is in this sort of vortex where it has its up points, but it has its really, really down points. Mm-hmm. And its up points are usually uh, Destination X. Hey, and maybe we'd be seasoned there saying, oh, good matches, but I was left with a terrible taste in my fucking mouth. In my mouth, in my mouth, fucking Jeff Hardy. Uh, even, and even that's that. the thing, but but, but but I mean, yeah, we really can't go on that because how many people are really happy to see Jeff Hardy? Of the general wrestling fan, this is us as probably too big rest, pig of wrestling fans than than anything else. But the sword, or go ahead. Uh, yeah, no, no, go ahead. The the match, it's it's not the fact that Jeff Hardy won. I knew the minute they announced that match that Jeff Hardy was going to win. If you're mad about it because Jeff Hardy won, that's not the problem. Yeah. The problem is the match. The problem is Austin Aries hit Jeff Hardy with like almost a fucking bomb. 
Well, you I know, mean, is that any different listen, than what they do with John Cena, though? I, and really, the only diff- that's I, I agree with that. But the only difference is like he hit his finisher on him like how many times, and Hardy keeps kicking out. People out there, WWE doesn't even do this a it's lot. Still like an ROH so it, kind of thing to TNA. do. Finishers are there for a reason. You're not supposed to kick out of four fucking finishers and then win the match. Have you seen ROH? That, and ROH does it too, and that's it's not good either. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's not good either when ROH does it. Okay, okay, all right. Um, I well, let's go. Did anybody else have any commentary about uh, Bound for Glory in general before I go into this next point? Anybody? It was all right. Yeah, I watched. I watched about half of it, and you know, it was cool to see. Uh, cool to see Zima Ion because we know yeah. him sort of. And, uh, um, oh, I, I I did enjoy the. Um, the hardcore style of that street fight between mm-hmm. these mm-hmm. two guys—I forget who it doesn't matter. Um, Storm King, Mo <laughs> was, King Mo was useless, but it was an impressive. Match. It was, it was, it was a good, it was good for a hardcore match for sure. Uh, the tag match later, the three-way tag match, I thought was really good. Uh, I think it was the best match of the night. It was definitely hands down. It was the match. It was a show stealer. Um, and uh, 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 Joe, Joe and Magnus, I thought was decent too. Yeah, I think I, I think uh, uh, LB, you stuck around for that one, right? Yes, I do like when Samoa Joe does things. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Bobby, uh, but it's the same, it's same thing. I I haven't seen TNA in quite a while, and I, by extension, I haven't seen Samoa Joe in even longer. And it's <laughs> same guy. Same. I, I even I think I mentioned that during the pay per view. Same guy. It's the same Joe that he was when I stopped watching. So, <laughs> King Mo might as well have been Mo from Men on a Mission. Fucking pointless. Man, I would. I would pay more yeah, for that. I would have yeah. watched but that. But Bobby. Bobby, Jesse are you going to talk about the fact that there was that celebrity that showed up that only you know who he is? Yeah, the guy from Big Brother, Jesse God- Goddard's Mr. Spectacular. Yes, ends up now on TNA. Ends up being Victoria's Hollywood boyfriend. What what are we missing with this, Bobby? He was on Big Brother. That's all you need to know. Mm-hmm. He's he on Big Brother. I didn't I don't know if he won or not. I don't think he did. But he he was on Big Brother. <laughs> He, Big he Brother is, like aficionado, and you don't even know if he won. He, he was on Big Brother. Big Brother ten. Yeah, and he brought uh, granola. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Santa. his big contribution to TNA. Apparently, is granola. Just, granola. He, he's granola. dressed as Santa Claus and brought flaxseed oil and all that healthy stuff, and threw away all their junk food this season. Yeah. Oh, wow. Pretty much. Oh, he sounds like a dick. Yeah, he does. <laughs> he, kind of is. he plays. He play, He was a bad guy in Big Brother, and I'm sure he's going to play a bad guy in TNA. Yeah, I and guess then, so. And then subsequently, so. flip back and forth every week. Like oh, so it'd be like any TNA. other anybody else on TNA. <laughs> yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, the, one more thing before we move on. Uh, so Devon okay. is revealed as one of Aces and Eights. Uh, were you genuinely surprised? And was that enough of a surprise? My my uh, reaction no when I know. found out that news was, oh, mm. Mm. Like, it was like, oh, okay, okay, and you know, and and I feel Devon. I, I thought he was going to go and he was going to get decent health care and money from WWE, but no, no. Yeah, it's a shame. That's a shame. So you'd, you'd rather be a biker. Yeah, they like say Big BBC makes some good point. He was not announced as a leader. He's just the guy they reveal. And of course, Ace but and honestly, we... if it's the fucking biggest pay per view of the year, you should really announce the leader. Yeah, yeah. The, the spacing it out thing is not working out for them. Uh, so, so, and I think most importantly, what should Mad Mike review now he's moving on from Impact? My vote is either the porn or main event. There's only like four porns he could review, though. Yes, and all of them involve China. Well, at some Not point all, he would no, have. Shelly Martinez was in a lovely little porn. He doesn't watch indie wrestling. Watch Fox. <laughs> she was a vampire in ECW. Uh, yes, yes. So that counts. Uh, that would be the shortest column, and then I think you just switch over the main event. That's me. That's me. He's not touching Slam. No, that's yours. That's ours. <laughs> that's yours. That's, that's ours. Sl- slam will always belong to us, Bobby. Yeah, mm-hmm. we'll always have slam. It's like Paris. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> like Paris. You'll always have except, Paris. Except for this Saturday. 
except for this Saturday. That's okay. That happens. I mean, how many did I miss? So I'll yeah, try to cover that for you. in Paris. Yes. Right. I okay. Keep, I keep thinking you say terrorist. Saturdays with yeah, terrorists. There's no Saturdays in terrorists. <laughs> They'll always have terrorists. <laughs> so there you go. There you go. I think that's it. Does anyone else have anything else for Mike on what he should review here? Any other ideas? Uh, review my maybe uh, maybe old uh, Thunder in Paradise <laughs> uh, episodes. Yeah. I yes. mean, or, um, or, uh, Hulk Hogan movies. Hulk Hogan movies, you know? I mean, yeah, I you know, one. like the wrestling. I have one somewhere. Yeah, what? A Hulk Hogan movie? I have a, what's it called? Fucking Suburban Commando, the best. Suburban Commando. I haven't gotten the, the chance best. to watch it yet. Maybe I'll review it. The best. Um, all right, let's get into this. Um, speaking of Hulk Hogan, <laughs> what happened? Who's the expert on this one? I don't care. Someone else talk about it. <laughs> so apparently, this All I sounds know like is he's still suing people. He's suing what Bubba the Love Sponge, right? He's suing Bubba, Bubba the Love he's suing Gawker, Gawker, who uh, kind yeah. of broke the tape or something. So apparently, Bubba the Love Sponge and his wife conspired to get the tape made with a ha- hidden camera. Are you Heel fucking turn. serious? No. Heel turn. Because when I have a best friend and uh, he says, hey, why don't you take my wife and have sex with her in this room while I'm in this other room and watch? I never think that they're fucking filming me. (laughs) I just think that's a normal fucking occurrence. You are really embracing the college experience, aren't you? (laughs) (laughs) Chachi is fucking broken. (laughs) just broken over here what'd you do wrestle fan wrestle's fan wrestle's fan wrestle's fan wrestle's fan wrestle's fan explanation of that was just amazing <laughs> like I, I need that as a sound bite to just play over and over somebody, and over. somebody put that in the notes please um, <laughs> but honestly like seriously <laughs> I'm sorry I don't I, feel bad for Hogan at least then the fact that he's asking what for like a hundred million dollars or whatever the fuck the number well, is he's gotta make up for all that money he gave the window Gawker. yeah like honestly you 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 let your uh, best friend apparently give you his wife and just have him sleep with him <laughs> while you, he's in the other room, and you don't think anything of it. You don't think something's fucking up. <laughs> oh, something was fucking up. Oh, oh I, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Gawker, it, that, that's right. in question. Gawker, <laughs> Gawker is uh, you know it's a fine network of websites, and they've got some very interesting stuff. Those motherfuckers do not have one hundred million dollars. I guarantee it. And. The fact that Hogan is suing over this shit is fucking ridiculous. He had more convincing sex during WrestleMania than in this fucking videotape. This shit is ridiculous, and I think it's a fucking work from the ground up. Bubba's in on it. Hogan's in on it. That random bitch is in on it. And fucking Howard Stern's in on it, too. I believe it. I believe they're all serious. Wait, well, isn't Bubba Love Sponge on his uh, channel? Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. We, uh, oh, you, you think this is just going to show up in uh, TNA sometime? Collusion. Collusion. This reeks of collusion. I don't know if it will go as far as showing up on TNA, but what? Seriously, he's on like was Hogan on like the fucking Today Show or whatever talking about it? Like who the What's fuck? He seriously, cares? what the hell? Yeah, like, he's, he's getting all cares? kinds of media over it, which is exactly what he wants. Yeah, he wants right. people to know his name again and to look at him, that's, and that's so sad. he figures there's no better way to do that than reality. That's so TV. sad. That's so sad. He called Matt Lauer glib. Glib. I love that all the that's all the so people. <laughs> I love though that all the people there are saying like they, when they finally watch the sex tape that that like completely ruined their childhood. They haven't obviously been like watching yeah. Hogan for the past like ten years. Yeah, yeah. Well, a lot of people kind of stumbled on this thing, so mm. it's a big story. Yeah, it felt like a sex roller coaster. Um. <laughs> so there was, you know, hey, let's touch on this real quick. That I'm just seeing. Uh, I don't know who put this in the in the doc, but uh, I'm ni- it's nice to see that Mike Knox is making an appearance. Michael Q. Knoxville. That's right, folks. He's back in the wrestling ring. 
Yes, he is. That's the only reason I put that in there. Of sorts. Uh, what, what, what is he doing? He's a member of the Aces and Eights. <laughs> <laughs> Which, Why you know, not? great, these guys are getting work, but, you know, we'll see how it goes. I don't know if it's going to help their Mike career Knox. necessarily. So. And, and Luke Gallows. I like Luke Gallows. I love the Festus thing. I love this stuff. That's uh, I love when we talked to him for five minutes and he said he couldn't be on our show. Um, you know, for, you know for stuff certain like that. reasons um, that aren't necessarily mm-hmm. disposable. Does he know Manchild's looking for him? He's still looking for him? Still looking well, for Luke maybe Carlos. he should tune in Thursday <laughs> nights on Spike TV and uh, he will get a little closer to that. Um, other stuff going on. Uh, and speaking of sad superstars that we talked about a couple minutes ago, um, Sonny. Is just continually, continually sad. Yeah. Uh, what the hell's going on? Is she? It was she was in jail like six times in a couple weeks. Was that it? Yep. What the hell? Basically, the story was it was for domestic violence or something like that against her boyfriend or something. And like she basically the series is she would get arrested. They would she would get on on bond or whatever the fuck, and then she would literally and they would say, "Don't do that again." And she went back and did it again. And she Don't did it, like, you do that time. again. At least yeah. that's what I know of the story. It's it's sad, but it's not surprising, especially the fact that all I don't. This kind of goes off of it, but like I and I've mentioned this before. If you follow me on like Twitter or something like or stuff like that. I'm really hating, like, these shoot interview series. Like, some of them, I like shoot interviews because they're really informative and I like to, you know, hear these stories. But everyone's, a lot of them are just really getting exploitive now. Yeah. Especially yeah. with Sunny. Like, so they released, like, a couple Sunny, like, um, our video did one. Uh, K-Fabe Commentaries is just coming out one and it's just, like, sad. Well, she's somebody that, that that's obviously having troubles, needs money. So it was like, come on here and tell us all your stuff. And, and it's probably somebody, I, mean, I don't know, maybe she's super nice. She was super nice when she was at the Legend Show and everything, but this is kind of what you see in this stuff. Well, the, uh, it, it's I'll somebody say, that, say, one, is an, atten- an attention whore. And I mean, you know, I think like in day-to-day life, you run into these attention whores that even if it's drama, as long as it's attention. And and that seems to be what's happening here. You know, I, I, with a lot of I these people. Say, or go ahead. With a lot of these people, and and then, and then you know what is it like the the wrestling fans that eat that stuff up because they wouldn't stop they wouldn't they wouldn't keep doing it if they weren't making money off of these things okay so this is a, we need a term for this like you know we had sex exploitation black exploitation was this like like wrestler Wrestle exploitation. exploitation. Uh, sad, re- sad retired wrestler exploitation uh, uh, inter- inter- films, and it's not, it's or something not like that. Retired wrestlers, like our, like our video did a did a one where like new, it's New Jack and Balls Mahoney in like some dark room, and they're just yelling at each other because they hate each other, and like that New Jack like threatens to mace him or something. Like it's just why are we doing this? Like seriously, it's not. And I think New Jack's probably like the prime example of the worst of it. Honestly, he shouldn't have like four shoot interviews in like a year from the same company. Yeah, you know he doesn't have that much to talk about. He's like, really? How much dirt do you have now? New Jack, you can put on anything because New Jack is just ridiculous. So, I mean, <laughs> I mean that's it. What was there? Somebody was I was listening to something and they, they, he he started doing some commentary and got some noise a, a, a month or two ago, and they said, you know, you know, really, New Jack is. The most known wrestler that has never been in the big two or three wrestling fans. Think about Probably, that. Yeah. Didn't he do a turn in WCW? Did he? I don't think so. I could, I could, I could be wrong about that. I thought, I thought he spent like, think, well, like a he did like month. Deep South or Smoky Mountain or something like. I don't think he is. I'll double check it. Of course, he's known for ECW for the most part. I'll, I'll bring up his Wikipedia here because you know that'll be accurate. <laughs> Uh, but no, it's it's very it's I I find it very exploitive, and I love shoot interviews because some of them are super like really informative. Yeah, and yeah. Feature people that I want to hear from and want to get their insights. I mean, it's cool. But others, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, but others, but others are just like I really don't want to watch this. Like I don't yeah. care. Like especially the Sunny one. Like the recent one, Sunny got released for for K-Fabe commentaries. The whole trailer is just like her bad mouthing who she fucked in the business. Mm-hmm. You know who you don't want to uh, trick into filming a porn with your wife? New oh. Jack. <laughs> <laughs> He'll fucking cut you. Yeah, he yeah, will yeah. fucking cut you. Stab you with a fork. 
Can get fork stabbed. You ever get fork stabbed, Jimmy? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't see any mention of WCW on his page here, so it must not be true. Uh, no, <laughs> um, no, no, but yeah, I like like listening to some of those where it's like the Heart Foundation kicking back, I'm like, remember that time that we we're on the road to Poughkeepsie and blah blah blah. I mean, I like those, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, the time we like- had, the time we had Jerry Sags on here just bullshitting about the time that they broke into uh, Neverland Ranch and with the rockers and. <laughs> And you know, boy, did they say they peed on Elvis's grave or something? I don't know. Yeah. Um, I mean, that, there's, that's, there's, that's there's one fun. shoot interview from an uh, art video with uh, Tajiri, and it's all in like extremely broken English. But I really want to buy that just from the stories, mm-hmm. like how you know the knowledge that he has and stuff oh, like there that. Go, there you go. AJ, AJ's in the chat room saying shoot exploitation. Shoot exploitation. That actually kind of works because shoot really is mostly a wrestling term. So uh, let's see. Ryan Mitchell should do a shoot interview. He's a big attention whore. That's not nice. Whoever you are out there. <laughs> Chachi, did you say that? That's not Chachi. It's, okay. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Oh, uh, you know. Um, don't you have to be a re- But don't you? Aren't you inherently an attention whore just being in wrestling? Eh. Right? You know Not who's always. attention whores? Who's attention whores? We are. Because we do a podcast? <laughs> yes. We're kind of, Please we're look kind of at us. Yeah. Look at me. I'm over here. Hey, look at me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now look back at your camera. Now look at me. Now back to your camera. Now look at Russell Fan. Ta da! I don't. Did you just. Did you just put me in a commercial yeah all right uh, i had twice. so uh, uh tna hired somebody not that a lot of us are going to be watching them after uh now um so they what well two things came out of this story that that educated me what i've heard of this one show called i think it's called the aftermath um okay tna hires a woman that looks like she's just going to be on TV presenter kind of candy. Like, I don't know. Maybe she'll be doing interviews in the back or something like that. Thank uh, God. One that. Thank God. Actually, Hemi, I swear to God, I want to like. Actually seems Hemi. to know wrestling. And also, apparently, because I believe this show is. I WWE hired her. What? I thought WWE hired I'm her. I'm sorry. WWE. Wow. I was going to say, we're talking about TNA a bunch. I, uh, why wow, why did I that? think that was TNA? Okay. Uh, also, she's hired from, uh, I, I think this is a show that shows up on the score that is like, I love how it's just like ESPN roundtable discussion sort of thing about wrestling on freaking TV with production values. That's impressive. There she is right there. Um, and I listened to a And there's Whoa. a former referee, uh, Jimmy Corderas. I think it is. Yeah, Jimmy Corderas does a lot of stuff like that. Yeah, so, well, you got... Hot off the press email. Okay. Hey, Mayhem, it's me, it's me, uh, screw this. This is Ciro. I won't make it in today. (laughs) Some things that need addressed. My Raw review. Raw was good. One, (laughs) say what you will, Battle for Glory was a good pay-per-view. Two, this week I learned Ryback is the next big thing. Three, sad news. Hector Garza, the wrestler, not my cousin, retired because of pulmonary cancer. Stop the wrestle fan. Aww. Name the PWG six. No googling. Later's dude. Later's dudes. Zero out. That's very impromptu, but uh, even more well, impromptu. Well, wrestle fan. PWG PWG six. Go. No googling. I don't know what that means. He's dumped. He loses. Bobby, Bobby, you got confetti six? handy? Oh, wait. Oh, uh, I, think, I, think, I think he knows what he's referring. I, different I, confetti. Yay. I, they're, in, yeah. they're in California. They're in... Aw, can't have a Pokeball. It's pro wrestling uh, gorilla, so... <laughs> All right, on that note, what did you guys learn from wrestling this week, guys? Chachi? That uh, Ryback is over? As fuck. Oh, as fuck, dude. As fuck. Hey, yo, I... don't, isn't everybody cut? Kind of, aren't we all? Because like, anybody, I, I get the feeling I'm looking around, just like, what the fuck did this happen? It, I mean, I, I'm not hating it. It started as. But it's just like, again, fuck, where did this happen? Uh, it, it worked. Pardon, uh, pardon my uh, my my terms, but this started off as a a a simple simple fucking gimmick. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Like, not like an in-depth, normal wrestling gimmick. You can't say I mean, that the was... old style doesn't work, because that's exactly what yeah. they did. They just Goldberg the shit yeah, out of this guy. I mean, me at, out of nowhere, there's this dude built like a brick shit house, mm-hmm. comes out, destroys two people we've never seen before. For weeks. For weeks. Weeks. Feed me more. Exit. Yeah. That's the that's segment. It. That's it. You know, you, with isn't it? Because, you know, we've gone to the smaller wrestlers on top and everything like that. Isn't this like maybe a we haven't had big wrestlers for the longest time. So this works again. I guess. You know, like, well, this is what we've been missing is the big guy that just destroys people. And you can go this far, you know. Yeah. So there you go. LB, what'd you learn? Uh, I learned, I learned a lot, uh, watching the CM Punk documentary. It's an excellent, excellent thing. Um, if you, if you want to know why CM Punk is where he is today, or if you just want to kind of get inspired, I found the whole, the whole documentary to be very, very inspiring. So. Excellent. Excellent. And I don't know what I, what I learned from that, but fuck it. <laughs> Russell oh, fan. I know what I learned from Russell fan. Uh, I learned from wrestling this week that, uh, you know, I thought Claudio Castagnoli was amazing, and I thought he could not get more amazing, but then he wrestled on Raw last night, and that motherfucker busted out double stomps. Like, mm-hmm. that shit was crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, that match was phenomenal. Also, I think I can answer the question now, because um, I think I know what he's referring to. Uh, Super Dragon, Scott Loss, Joey Ryan, Excalibur, Quicksilver, and Disco Machine. Uh, Zero 2K, tell me if I'm right. Okay, no Google? Good. Uh, good. No, no Google. Hands are free. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Bobby? I I learned that... Bam. bam. (laughs) I learned that uh, wrestling is sponsored by three different types of chicken that you can dip. (laughs) (laughs) It's all they were pushing last night. KFC's chicken dippers. Popeye's chicken dippers. And... I don't know. Other chicken that you could dip... I, and it, it, it was it was it was an ongoing thing in the the uh, hangout last night. I give all the credit to Russell fan. Uh, WWE chicken. sponsored by chicken, chicken. <laughs> and um, another thing, uh, is, can somebody check if the Miz is still alive? <laughs> yeah. That was a brutal. Oh, that was yeah. nuts. Hey, so it, it was awesome. Hey, Sorg. Yes, sir. What did you learn from wrestling this week? Uh, I learned. Hmm. Hmm. Sometimes wrestlers just don't give a fuck uh, about throwing Gatorade at, at electronic equipment. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Not still not happy about that one. Um, I learned one more thing from wrestling this week. Okay. And it's thanks to Will. Okay. Um, CM Punk used to tear up his promos. That's a fun fact. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, that's cool. uh, they, would the, hand him- he, they would hand him scripts of what they wanted him to say, and he would tear them up. Nice. Okay, uh, the chat room uh, learned that uh, Big PPC learned that John Cena can actually put PP- people uh, over besides himself. Actually, gave Ryback something since Ryder didn't work. Uh, Hot Wheels said, "I learned Kofi can kick you, stupid." Uh, Bo Diggity learned I uh, that I'm capable of full arsenal in hotel room wrestling moves. Um, and Hot Wheels also learned that WWE loves showing it five times or more. Uh, Riz learned that Brutus Clay's disco ball still spins even after he gets his ass kicked by Alberto <laughs> Del Rio. Chicken! Chicken! <laughs> and I don't know what else he's talking about. Something about PP people. I don't know what that means. Oh, because I said P- I. Moving on. Excellent. All right. <laughs> On that note, thank you guys for uh, joining us for Wrestling Mayhem Show. Again, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Check us out. iTunes, Blue TV, Roku, Stitcher. We're here every Tuesday night around 8.39 p.m. Live.SorgatronMedia.com. Join us in the chat room. Lots of guys uh, jumping in there. I like the guys that we just read off. Um, also, hey, contact us. We got emails at at WrestlingMayhemShow.com uh, Also drop us a line at 412-206-WMS0 for the hotline And we're on Facebook, Twitter at Mayhem Show and Google Plus Join us in the open group, all that stuff Buy the app, $1.99, iOS stores and uh, Amazon App Store to, to support us. Hey, we got some new uh, merch 
going on over there. If you go to live.sorgatronmedia.com, wrestlingmayhemshow.com, uh, there's a there's a t-shirt kind of button going on there. Uh, so if you want to wear the mayhem on your back, go do that. I think that'd be cool. That'd be cool. Send us pictures if you do something like that. On Maybe you'll rabbit. put it on your dog. Who knows? Who put it on knows? Your what? Put it on your Ryback. Put it on your Ryback. Thank you, everybody. LB, everybody in the chat room, Russell fan, Bobby, Chachi. We'll see you guys. We'll see you guys next week. Mayhem out.